All right. I know this is a bit unorthodox for me, especially on a Saturday morning, but I'm sitting out in the garage at the smoker. We got Vicky going back there. There you go. There's a shot that you guys can see, Vicky. So let's see. <clears throat> Anybody out there in internet world? Whew. Chilly, chilly this morning. <clears throat> Man. Again, I know this is rather unorthodox and rather impromptu, but I figured I would talk to you guys while I was cooking. So we have Vicky going back there in the back of the garage, well, middle of the garage, and uh, we'll see if anybody joins us. I know it's kind of early. Anyway, how are you who are non-existent watching this video right now doing? Hopefully everybody's doing well. And, uh, Did I not do the settings properly? Is this not a public video? Oh no! Bom dia! Toto bem! How you doing this morning? Ah? Uh, que bueno? Oh no, not que bueno. Toto bem! Uh, I'm doing fine, man. Hopefully everything is good for you as well. Oh man, so I have a question for you. How is your English? I know you always comment in Portuguese and I can sometimes when I'm looking at your comments, look at them and do Google Translate and hopefully my Google Translation replies are okay. Uh, but I always wanted to know, how is your English? So like, obviously I can't talk to you in Portuguese very long or very well aside from using Google Translate and I can't translate in real time. So who else do we have on? I see three folks here. If you could hit that thumbs up button for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. I'm going to thank you in advance for hitting that thumbs up button. So who else is here? Who do we have on the live stream? Say what's up so I can say hi to you. Uh, Todd, holy cow, I, I know what, you're on the west coast there, so I know it's it's rather early for you. It's 9 o'clock for me, so that means it's what, 6 o'clock in the morning for you? Thank you for joining. How did you enjoy, <laughs> did you enjoy my little clip on Russell's live stream last night? I actually didn't see it. I was asleep. I fell asleep <laughs> while watching, waiting for 10 o'clock to happen. Uh, what is that? Is that... Is it Kevin from oh, okay all right he's in the Midwest I thought you were further west <clears throat> Kevin from comparison cooking what's going on well Todd I appreciate you stopping by stopping in <clears throat> Kevin I, I know you're probably dealing with the same mucky yucky uh, rain ish you know it's it's gloomy where I am uh, yeah so I already know you're probably dealing with the same thing. Are you cooking anything this morning? Holy cow, we got, I do not speak English. Oh no. All right, just waking up, need more coffee, <laughs> Parison says. Morning Dash here from the Eastern Shore. Rick Short, holy cow, we got a bunch of folks on the Eastern Shore. So I actually will probably be going out to the Eastern Shore uh, within the next week or two. Uh, if you guys remember on the live stream last week on Wednesday, Kirk told me about a 500 gallon uh, propane tank that he has somebody that he just wants to get rid of it. I got to figure out a way to go and get it. Uh, Kirk told me that thing weighs 1,100 pounds. So I put the, the uh, engine hoist away, but I'm going to have to take the engine hoist, Vanna, and the trailer that you can see right there, that the red piece. That's the trailer. And uh, we got to go over there and pick up that uh, thing. Uh, Thank you, Todd. All right, she said it was and uh, was funny. All right, Jeffrey Auburn. Hello from France. Kuma se va. <clears throat> Ron McRae. Good morning to you too, sir. Ah, man. Oh uh, yeah. Well, Craig. Craig, right from uh, Beers Jack of Barbecue. I know you're just north of where I am, so. We're probably experiencing the same horrible weather too. Big E Southern Q, what's going on, Big E? 
Jimmy Q, holy cow, man, there's, there's a bunch of you folks on this morning. I really appreciate you guys hanging in. Samuel says, morning from Birmingham, Alabama. I have an uncle that lives down in Alabama. Uh, I don't know. He's not in Birmingham, no, but he's not far from Birmingham from what I remember. Uh, Kent Island. All right, well, I might have to, if I get out there, maybe I'll stop passing and, and say hi or something. I don't know though. You'll have to wear a mask. I'll have to wear a mask. It probably won't be that fun or cool, but we shall see. Ron McCrace is South Florida. <laughs> Jeffrey Auburn says good. Uh, let's see. I say Bert. Oh, okay. So let's see. Saber Texas says good morning, bro. Showing some love from South Texas. Smoke them if you got them. If you guys can't see, I have Vicky going back there. And feels like we have hit a well. Actually, a lot of that is is steam because it's so cold, and the smoker is actually pretty darn warm. Uh, on the shelf where I have my food, it's sitting at 282 degrees. I would love to actually get it a little lower, but I'm not that concerned. It's just a teeny brisket. Ah, uh, Walter Travis, hello to you too. What's new? What's up? <laughs> How you doing this morning? Keith, Keith, Ken. oh crap, not Keith, Ken, 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 Kenneth, you guys, you, you guys have too many similar names, there's too many of you guys on right now that have the same name, uh, uh da, 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 what did I miss, what's rolling today, so I have some, I just have a small brisket in the smoker currently, uh, in Vicky back there, so uh, just that small brisket, and I have some chicken wings that I need to cook as well. If you guys can hear, uh, the rain is picking up, so it might get loud. I actually heard a couple of thunderclaps, so it might uh, might have some thunder uh, co-starring today. Walter Travis says hello from Cincinnati. Holy cow, Ohio in the house. Uh, Big E says it's uh, Soggy here in Louisville. Yes, Brandon, holy cow. Yeah, Brandon, you know, I've been trying to do, because I know folks are sitting at home and I have nothing else to do. Like, it's too cold for me really to be working in the garage. I have, I started cleaning up, doing some organization back there. So, but it's, it's just too daggone cold. Like, I'm sitting right now with my hands in my jacket trying to keep warm. I don't have any coffee. I didn't get any coffee this morning. I probably should have before I started this, but I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm not going to worry about starting it up. Uh... What's the deal? Uh, I'm hopping in. I'm hopping it down in Atlanta, Jerry Baldwin. That's what's up. Atlanta in the house. <laughs> yeah, Dan Murphy. I don't have an exhaust vent, but you see, there's a window here and there's another one back there that are both open at the top. I don't really need an exhaust vent. That's why I'm sitting. I'm actually sitting at the front of the garage. I am uh, right at the bay. So the, the fresh air is coming in here, and uh, you see there there's slight wisps of smoke in here, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, if I were running Bessie, you see Bessie has an exhaust out the window because she, uh, because of the fact that I'm using wood with Bessie, she puts out a lot more smoke than Vicky does. All right, good, so good Saturday for uh, my family. Thank you very much. Bom sábado para você e sua família. Familia. Uh, thank you, sir. Obrigado. Obrigado. Juan Quinn says, morning from Chicago. Morning. Hopefully you're not getting blown away uh, in the Windy City. Ron says, I got some jerk pork and a beef tenderloin in the smoke on the smoker. Well, that's what's up, man. I haven't cooked a tenderloin in quite some time. Uh, I haven't cooked a tenderloin since uh, Porter and York sent me one. Jimmy Q says, snow yesterday, a beautiful sunny day here <laughs> in that up, uh, up, uh, in that, in that state up north. Jeez. I'm cold. My hands are cold. Uh, Donald says, uh, morning dash, Houston in the house. Holy cow. Justice World, what's going on? That's Wallace, right? Wallace, I think that was your name. Good morning, big man. Good morning to you too, sir. Heck yeah, I want to roll on a brisket. I'm going to do some St. Louis style ribs. Well, what's stopping you, man? Get them done. Get them started. Get the, get the day going. All right. 
Noob says, good morning, Dash. Well, good morning to you too, sir. Hopefully everything is good with you. Terry, how you doing this morning? Yes, Jimmy Q in the building. Uh, I'm getting text messages. Oh, gosh. Brandon says, I'm just sitting here with my taste testers, one, two, and three, eating breakfast. Had to uh, close the day because we got slammed yesterday and ran out of a lot of food. Brandon, talk about a good problem to have, all right? Talk about a good problem to have. Dude, I am uh, I am so happy that everything is working out for you, especially during these trying times. I know that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it wasn't the best time to start a restaurant or get a restaurant going, but it seems like you're uh, you're kicking kicking butt, so that is awesome. Sitting at work with nothing to do, so Dash has given me something to do. Well, glad I can be a part. We got Luke Kalamatis in the building. Yo, if you haven't, if you haven't, if you haven't, Taking a moment, check out Lou's channel. So Lou changed his name of his channel to Sweet Lou's Barbecue underscore New Jersey. All right, so Lou's Sweet Barbecue New Jersey. He did a brisket last weekend. He did a brisket cook last weekend, and I think it turned out fantastic. There's some things that he's got to you know work on with the fact that he's doing some some video for the first time in a long time or the first time ever. But I think we should all give him some encouragement and. Uh, try to see him do some more stuff in the future uh cassie or casey says man i just want to say i've been following you for a long time now really enjoy your input and advice man keep up the excellent work casey i appreciate that man i really tell you i have not gotten to the end of my my rope here but there's only so much that i can do there's only so much that i can cook i don't cook like a thousand different things i i try to tell people all the time I have a keep it simple attitude and I try and keep it simple with the things that I cook the things that I do but I try and focus on a dis different aspect of a cook or a different aspect of some information any and every time I do a video so hopefully I you know some of the things that I found some of the things that I've learned over time are helpful to you guys and that's what keeps me going keeps me doing this and comments like that are very 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 uh, helpful Craig said, I did a rack pork last night just on the Weber kettle. Dude, I have some rib videos coming. So those of you guys who are here are going to get a preview. Well, not a preview. I'm going to tell you what, what's coming. I have some beef ribs coming. I have some baby backs coming. And yesterday I bought for the first time ever, yes, the first time ever, some spare ribs. I'm going to be cooking some spares. I do not know which of the cookers I'm going to be using. I don't know if I'm going to use the Weber kettle. I don't know if I'm going to be using the big green egg or if I'm going to be using the number one drum. But I'm going to be cooking some spares and uh, yeah, we're just going to send it. <laughs> I'm going to cook some spares. Uh, California checking in. Louis, Louis Gomez says, good morning. <laughs> Jeez, what's new? I need some wings now. Well, shoot, man, get some wings on there with them ribs. Yo, wings are, <sighs> wings are like a mixed blessing. They are so easy to cook because they cook rather quickly and, and they don't care how they get cooked, but they are a pain because I saw, you know, I cook them, I lay them naked, upside down, um, skin side down first. I let them cook naked for a while. Then I put sauce on the underside, spread that sauce out, kind of paint that sauce out, flip them over, sauce the top side, and then just let them cook. So they're very simple because there's no, prep really in the beginning or prep in the end you just have to clean them make sure that they're good season them throw them on a smoker so it's not like a, a brisket where you have to trim the brisket ahead of time you have to season the brisket and you have to cook the brisket and you have to take it and, and wrap it up and then you have to take it and let it rest and then you have to take it and you slice it up so you, you see what i'm saying as far as the workload but but doing 20 wings is nothing doing 100 wings yo i just I'm like, you want a hundred wings? Like, a hundred, really? Why do you want a hundred wings? <laughs> oh man, it, it can be daunting. Uncle Steve, what's going on? He says, morning Dash, how about some cinnamon rolls? Uh, How about, uh, I guess some cinnamon rolls and coffee, man. I wish I could have cinnamon rolls with breakfast. I've been doing the intermittent fasting thing, so I've been trying not to cheat. 
I have every now and again. I'm not even going to lie. But I've been trying not to cheat and not eat anything before noon. Uh, so my eating window is from noon until 8 p.m. And so that's why a lot of times, or like even in that coffee video, I drank my coffee black. And I've been drinking it black for a while, and it's not that bad. Uh, hey, if you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up button for me. There's almost 40 of you guys on the live stream. And there are only 17 likes. Can we get those likes up, please? It really makes me feel better, and it really does help these videos, these live videos, and it helps my channel immensely. So if you could hit that thumbs up button for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Oh, my Uncle Calvin is in the building. Uncle Calvin, hold on, let me get, let me get a little closer for you. Now, I didn't actually comb my beard. I probably should have combed my beard out a little bit. But, you know, my locks are full, okay? Even with all the gray in there, my, my locks are full. <laughs> uh, Luz, it's top of the morning to you. Nothing better than sitting in front of the smoker on a Saturday morning. Yeah, I just wish it was warmer. Uh, and I got my little red riding hood jacket on, as someone commented in the last video. So also a little inside uh, inside information. In the video that I'm doing on this, this cook, uh, just keep an eye out on all of the different jackets that I wear. All right. So again, a little insider information for you guys who are here. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Rick, if you're going to try any of Uncle Steve's rub, get the original and get the thick meat. Those are, uh, dude, actually, to be completely honest, just get, get all four. Why even play around? Get all four. The original, the spicy R, the thick meat, and the gator shake. Dude, you, you, you're not going to be disappointed. You're, you're really not. Uh, <laughs> uh, morning, bro. It's snowing in Boston. Crazy. We need some of that heat. <laughs> what heat, Dale? Man, it's like 40 degrees out currently where I'm sitting. Shoot. He's the just stir started my own barbecue trailer. And I've learned a lot from guys like you. Shout out from Fort Worth. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, definitely best of luck to you and your future endeavors. Noobs is so dash. Uh, does your garage smell like tasty smoke goodness all the time? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Dude, it is amazing. You Once you get within, now, if I'm cooking, you can get within about 20 or 30 feet and then you smell it. But if I'm not cooking or if I cook like the day before or the week before, you as soon as you walk in the garage, you smell smoke. You can ask my Uncle Calvin. My Uncle Calvin can attest. It, it smells like smoked meat goodness in here all the time. And if I spend too much time in the garage, I smell like smoked meat, even if I'm not cooking. But today I am cooking, so all everything that I'm wearing, like the, the smoke gets in my beard. And it is lovely because it's like... I'll, I'll get up, I'll get a shower, take a shower, come out here, start cooking, or I'll wake up in the middle of the night, start cooking. And then when I get my day started, like after like after everything is done and I'll rest, I'll take a shower, I'll wash my beard, and I can smell, like as soon as the water hits the beard, I can smell the smoke, the meat again. It is no problem, Lou, no problem. Uh, Brandon says chicken, especially wings, are really cheap in my area. Five days, a 40-pound box dropped from Drop ten dollars. Breast drop twelve dollars. Dude, that is what's up. So one of the things that is actually crazy is I saw something talking about the fact that restaurants, because a lot of restaurants aren't actually cooking, uh, and and in this area, of course, everyone knows Maryland is big and known for Maryland blue crabs. Uh, because of the fact that there are a lot of restaurants that take probably fifty or sixty percent of the supply of the blue crabs in the area. And those restaurants are closed and or not selling as much crab the price of crab because the demand is so low has dropped so i think it's an awesome opportunity and the person that was on the news the person that was talking about it he was like you know what you can do you know everybody's talking about supporting small businesses he's like you know find somebody that's selling crabs and if you have the ability to get some crabs from them get some crabs from them uh, but Brandon, the wings in my area, like I was at Sam's yesterday, the wings are up like 20, no, actually they were 246 a pound. They're normally at about two, um, 199 is what I like to get them at. Kirby Q, what's up? <laughs> yes, I do have a real smokehouse, uh, for sure. 
I definitely a real smokehouse. Frio says good morning. Frio, somebody else checked in from Boston. He said that it was snowing, so hopefully you are staying warm and safe. Uh, how's your wife? How's that? How's everything with, with her going? In case you guys don't know, Frio said his wife is uh, she's a nurse. I'm not sure if he said what type of nurse she is, but he talked about the fact that she's a nurse, and you know, obviously she is on the front line. So my heart and uh, you know my my thoughts go out to you and yours for sure. Don Loops says, morning, folks. Uh, Frio says, we got about three inches of snow uh, out of nowhere last night. Love the Northeast. Psych. <laughs> uh, are you going, are you sure you don't need an exhaust vent in there? Uh, it's getting kind of smoky. Uh, like I said, so the whole thing is, and you can see the smoke is blowing, or the smoke is blowing around back there. Because I'm sitting in the front of the garage and, and I, oh my gosh, my knees. So there's where I'm sitting and there's the front of the garage. I am really sitting out in the fresh air. Oh, hey, did you want to say hi to, to Vanna? Hey, Vanna. So I normally, Vanna's parked there in that ball spot, but I parked her on the angle in the driveway. One of the last times I drove her. Oh man. So actually been having issues with my knees. Uh, my... I went and found out that I have a touch of tendonitis and uh, standing up from a seat, walking up and down stairs, getting in and out of my car has been very painful recently. I haven't talked about it recently or actually at all to, to you guys. We've talked about it in the videos. I mean, my health, <sighs> nobody cares about my health. They just care about what I'm cooking. Um, but uh, I've been having some, some t hard time with my knees. Uh, ever since I went to that trip uh, down in the Great Smoky Mountains and we did all of that hiking, my knees have not been the same. Uh, but I've gone to the doctor, went to an orthopedic surgeon, I guess, and he said I need to do rehab. Of course, I can't really do rehab now that uh, everything is kind of shut down. So I have to be patient. I have to wait until things die down a little bit, and then I can actually go into a rehab center and try to do some rehabilitation. Uh, cookout couch this is I uh, hear that so I'm kind of behind on the comments as usual I'm a minute or so behind so uh, try to speak in full sentences uh, da, 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 da. I didn't know the beer smoke was the thing that's a lot of smoke going on yo uh, even when I'm cooking so uh, uh, can even when I'm cooking on the side of the house like if I'm using a drum or like I when I did the I did the baby back ribs in the big green egg, like going out to the smoker, starting the smoker, you know, moving things around, wrapping things up, like I smell like smoke the entire day that I was cooking. So I am working from home on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays have when have been when I've been cooking, doing different things, especially on the side of the house because it's so close. I can work and cook at the same time. I get up early enough in the morning. I try to get something started. Hopefully the wind isn't bothering you guys. I try to get something started so it'll be done for lunch so we can have uh, we can have a smoked meat lunch. It probably will be a couple more weeks before my wife gets tired of it. Eddie writes barbecue and says, yo, hey, yo, man, how you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my uncle says that's why he shaved his beard after his last visit to my house. <laughs> Kent, hey yo, Kent, how you doing this evening or this morning? See, I'm so used to saying evening because I don't only live stream at night. I guess I got to get over that. Every now and again, we're going to do some Saturday live streams if I'm cooking on a Saturday morning or Sunday morning. So be prepared. I tried to do a little bit better this, this week, this morning, and give you a little bit of a, a notice so that you can get the notification and then hopefully come and join me on the live stream. Uh, speaking of your beard, uh, did you ever uh, get a royalty check from the Facebook commercial? No, Brandon, I did not. Uh, so there was one, actually, I think it's happened three times now that they used my clip, the video clip, in the Facebook ads. The first one happened about uh, October last year. I talked to the guy who, who uh, put it up, and it was a young guy, and I threatened him. I was like, look, um, I know where you live. I found your address. Uh, so listen, I, if, if you don't take it down... I will have a lawyer draw up some documentation and serve you with this paper. And he took it down pretty pretty quickly. 
The second one, I kind of did it on autopilot because of the fact that I, I, I found out what I had to do from Facebook to get it removed. Uh, and they took it down within about a day. Facebook actually removed it. Then the third time, the the company, the people who ever set the ad up, they basically, they kind of just bided their time. I don't know how long they had the ad up, but in the 24, 48 hours that they had the ad up since I was notified about it, they had about 40 or, uh, it wasn't 40, it was about 10,000, 15,000 views on the video. I told them that they needed to pay me two cents for every view that they had. And then they kind of got quiet and said they were going to talk to their marketing department about a budget and i hadn't heard anything back from them uh, unfortunately i think the ad just kind of fizzled out or they took it down either way i reported them all through facebook unfortunately unfortunately the way facebook works is they're like well is it a violation of your copyright yes it is because no one consulted me before using the video now if someone asks me to use the video uh in one of their ads look if you ask me ahead of time, I probably wouldn't have had a problem with it. But if you ask me for it, and you're getting you're getting made you know money you're getting paid from the from it, yo, just break me off a little something, and you know we can y'all can run the ad as long as you want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, prices are definitely up in the grocery store. Sure enough, certain things are up, certain things are down. Uh, when everything started to take place, and everybody was kind of hoarding stuff eggs from what i understand eggs doubled in price i was so lucky enough to go into the restaurant depot i bought seven and a half dozen eggs i walked home with that box and my wife said what the hell are we going to do with seven and a half dozen eggs yo we are this is what three weeks in or three weeks since i got those eggs and we are down to less than a dozen eggs currently uh she's been you know uh hold on we got a co-star look <laughs> roll down the driveway anyway uh john Grinnell says good morning my friend good morning to you too cookout coach says uh well he's talking to kent so hey um <laughs> i get a lot of jumbo uh party wings 40 pounds for 76 dollars this week they were 66 dude get them get them uh 40 pounds what does that work out to per pound brandon uh, I just got up about eight. Well, that's what's up. I've been up this morning. I woke up. I set an alarm so that I could start this. I said, oh, I'll start at about 530 and I'll get up at six and get cooking. Man, I didn't get out here. This brisket didn't go on until 8 a.m. Uh, but it's a tiny brisket and it is cooking. It is cooking right along. Sitting at 144 degrees right now. And it's been, and I think my watch stopped. My watch stop. I gotta use my backup. So it's 9:30. So we're not even two hours in, and we are at 145 degrees. Uh, when I started, it was it you know was refrigerator cold, so it was in the 40s. Uh, but it's not taking very long to get this done. Once it hits 160, I probably I might just keep it out here. I don't know. Uh, it kind of depends on what time it is. But I also have the wings I need to cook. I have some refrigerators. You can kind of see. That white back there is one of the refrigerators. Uh, there's a white refrigerator and there's a black refrigerator right next to it. The wings are sitting in the black refrigerator already seasoned, ready to go. Uh, holy cow, Gerald says, wings are $1.92 here at Sam's. Man, my wings were $2.46. Uh, <laughs> all is well, we're just taking it day by day. She's taking all the precautions she can possibly take. I hope y'all are well. Yes, sir. Uh, definitely, we are doing well. My wife is uh, my wife is a little bit of an introvert, as you couldn't see from the videos. Uh, so she's rather concerned when I go out. Make sure you have a mask on. Where's your mask? Put your mask on. Uh, so I've been trying to, anytime I go out into somewhere, put the mask on, interact with people, put the mask on, and go from there. What's up, welders? We got Adam in the building. Uh, he says, what's up, Dash? There's something... When your hat, bro, might need to wipe that off. Oh, hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll. Sure thing, Adam. Sure thing. <laughs> Big Steve says, "Good morning, good people. I love after smoke, uh, after smoke on my gloves while working. <laughs> nice red jacket, but but I didn't mention it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah." 
Oh man, you guys are so fun. Funny, fun, fun. First thing in the morning. Uh, is it Keys Park, Dallas? I'm trying to see here. Uh, good morning, barbecue people. Maybe says, dang, y'all need to stop talking about wings. <laughs> Luckily, my wife isn't here because she pops up like magic when I'm watching chick a chicken wing video. Just starts uh, demanding chicken wings. Well, I think you need to, you know, happy wife, happy life, man. Just get some wings and take care of uh, that, you know, and you'll be good. Um, uh, Lou says, man, that's a lot of eggs for taste testing number two to cook during the streams. Dude, they have been cooking eggs like, <laughs> like crazy. You know, that's one of the things, and I think one of the things that contributes to the fact that there was so few uh there were so few eggs at the stores is because everybody's home eggs are very simple to make everybody can make eggs and they're very versatile so my wife has made we've you know we i think we probably have half a dozen hard-boiled eggs in the refrigerator currently to make like tuna salad she's made egg salad we've made deviled eggs we have had eggs over hard eggs scrambled you know no poached eggs i'm not a real big poached egg fan Unless it's cooked, cooked all the way through. Uh, all right, holy cow! Brandon says a dollar ninety a pound usually, and it went down to a dollar sixty-five this week. Dude, man, you might need to stock up and uh, freeze some of them. The only problem when you freeze wings like that, you have to either like separate them and freeze them in individual portions or whatever, or you 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 freeze the whole box and you gotta thaw the whole box, which isn't that bad. <laughs> Oh boy, hold on. My buddy Andrew. I'll drink to that. This is just some sparkling water here. Uh, uh, he says, LS swap and wings. Yeah, buddy. Dude, uh, so my buddy MacBoy212, he is doing an LS swap on a E. Is it 36 or 46? He is the E46, I believe. So I am actually living vicariously through him doing this LS swap and it is going to be magnificent once it is done. So much chop, so much rumble, so little rubber on the rear tires. I cannot wait. It is going to be great. Uh, do you have any problems with your refrigerator in the winter time such as freezing? So Don, I don't. Uh, what, what I end up doing is when it's really cold outside, I turn the refrigerator up so that it doesn't freeze things. But I also, um, I try to keep things in there. Like I'll put cases of water and things like that in the refrigerator just so there's something. I have these refrigerators out here and I've talked about it in the past. I had an event and once I finished cooking for the event, or actually while I was cooking, I realized that I was gonna run out of room in the refrigerators I had in my house. Now I already have two refrigerators in the house. I have one in the main kitchen and then I have a secondary kitchen, quote unquote, upstairs. So we have a second refrigerator upstairs. And then I have a few deep freezers. Well, I can't really put cooked food in a deep freezer. And I ran out of room in the refrigerator. So while I was cooking, I went out and bought a refrigerator. I loaded up the pickup truck, went out, found a refrigerator for less than 100 bucks, paid the guy, came home, plugged it in on a whim. The refrigerator hadn't even gotten cold before I put food in it while I was cooking or when I was finished for this particular event. And it has been rocking solid, strong out here in the garage for four years now. I haven't had any problems aside from the fact that whenever I lost power in the garage, um, I had an issue with the power in the garage. You guys may remember that. And uh, I just, you know, closed it off and didn't open it up. I didn't have anything in it. So when I lost power out here, I actually took everything that was in there out and you know, it just, it was fine. But never had an issue, like I said, I will turn the, the temperature up in the winter so that it doesn't freeze things and I'll turn the temperature down in the summer so that it, it will definitely stay cold. Uh, John says this brisket will go on tonight at 9. Well, that's what's up. Are you cooking it on the uh, Yoder? <laughs> Adam, out of Welder Fire Pit. So I got to run later, my friends. Good to see you, Dash. Well, thank you very much and the rest of my barbecue family. Stay safe, all of you. Smashing the like button before I go. Well, I appreciate that, Adam. 
you 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 uh, give my best to the missus and the, the children. Uh, Laz says put a 14 pound brisket on at 6 a.m. in this Weber Smoky Mountain. He said we eating good for dinner. Hold on, we gotta do you gotta do a happy dance about that. We eating good. <laughs> Got to build a barbecue hut, a shack this summer for the backyard. This damn weather is killing my barbecue time, dude. That is one of the advantages, and, and I get people to ask me all the time, why would you put your smokers in your garage? Uh, easy. I don't have to worry about the elements. Now, I will be completely honest with you guys. The roof of my garage is uh, deteriorating. Last summer, we had a storm come through here, and it took off like a good portion of the shingles on the roof. So you guys have seen some of the, the, the videos like when it's raining and I'm like dodging raindrops. So I actually have, we'll be getting a roof replaced on the garages this summer. I can't wait. I can't wait until they get replaced. I am looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to cost me a pretty penny, but we got to get, got to get it done. Got to get it taken care of slowly, but surely trying to improve different things excuse me trying to prove different things around the house and the garage I actually have a small roof on the uh, front of the house that i need to get taken care of too so we're going to try to get them both done at the same time uh, yes sir john says he's cooking on the yoder i've been using the uh the big green egg uh more and more recently it's just been one of those things where i have opportunity and and i think part of the problem and you know of course hindsight being 2020 and I won't say problem, but part of the reason why I wasn't using the, the Big Green Egg as much is because I didn't have the time that I needed to invest in order to get this, get you know the Big Green Egg going, to get it cooking, to get you know get everything started. But with everything that's going on, I have had a lot more time. I'm not as rushed to try to get things done, and I do have more time to cook longer cooks on the Big Green Egg. So the next, well, I said the next, but I talked about it. I have a beef rib video coming up soon. I have a baby back rib coming up soon. And I actually bought some spare ribs yesterday that I will be cooking early next week. And those ribs or that video will be coming up soon as well. So you guys have some, you know, um, insight as to some of the videos that are coming. Hey, noob, thank you very much, Dickie, for hanging out. Uh, I got to run, finish my testing at work. Y'all have a good one. You too, sir. Maceo, New Jersey in the building. Oh no, he's on you on Long Island, Staten Island? I don't I don't I don't remember. I try to remember. I know you're up in the Jersey, New York area. Up uh, brisket is getting close. Sitting at 151 degrees. We're getting there. Uh Sadusky Sharp says, uh, good morning, pitmaster. Stay warm. I do not consider myself a pitmaster, man. I'm just an arsonist that happens to cook. I do not call myself a pitmaster or a chef or anything like that. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Maceo said, Ayo! Ayo to you too, man. How you doing this morning? How's everything? Hopefully all is well and, you know, everything is cool with you and yours. Calvin says, brisket and wings. I'm getting hungry, man. Uh, I wish I had more. I'd tell you to come on down and pick some up. But I got a teeny tiny little brisket. This is only like an eight and a half pound brisket. This brisket is going to take no time at all to cook. And I am loving it. <laughs> so once this brisket hits 160 degrees, I probably it will probably be about that hour mark for the live stream. I just wanted to sit and talk to you guys and kill some time while I was out here. So I probably will go ahead and end the live stream and get the brisket wrapped up. I probably just, I don't know. I'll probably just leave it out here because the wings, like I said, I have wings I need to cook. So I'll probably just leave it out here, let it let it do what it's gonna do, cook the wings, and then I'll be done. I'm, I'm like way ahead of schedule. And I keep looking at my watch, but it seems like the watch, the battery in my watch has stopped. I need to take it off. Um, but it is almost 10 o'clock. I told these folks that I would have this thing done at two o'clock and delivered at about two o'clock. So I am making great time. Far cry, far cry from the last time I used Vicky, uh, or the last time you guys saw me use Vicky, and I was under a uh, time constraint. So, yes. Uh, Big Steve says, I got my brisket at 6.30 this morning, cooking at 2.50. Got an order for jerk chicken, jerk rib tips, and a barbecue chicken. That's what's up, man. Make some, make some of that side money. Yes, indeed. 
Holy cow, Russell, good morning, you beautiful man. Well, thank you very much, Russell. That says a lot coming from you. And you know what is so funny, Russell? I was just telling Todd, Todd popped in for a quick second, you know, Dad Incredible. I was telling him, I said, you know, I was trying to stay up last night and watch the 10 o'clock feature. And I must have fallen asleep like five minutes before the feature started. And then I, I took a, a quick nap and then I woke up again. It was 10, 15. And I was like, I missed my own feature. <laughs> so I have to, and I was trying to go back and watch the video. Do you not put the, like, do you take those videos down immediately or, or what? Cause I missed it, man. I missed it. I was kind of upset. I wanted to see all of everybody, you know, all together. Once the roof is on, we vent the outer other smoke. So. Once the roof gets redone, they are going to put some sort of ventilation system in here. Um, I actually did ask about that uh, as far as venting. I thought about trying to get one of those roof top vents that will help with the with like the heat. That'll be like a solar thing or just like a, a straight um, heat thing where it will draw out the hot air. So I'm not sure 100% on exactly what I'm going to do or how I'm going to work that out just yet. But there will be a roof vent, or at least the, the pitch will have some sort of ventilation system. So that'll help uh, get some of the smoke out. But I don't know if it'll be a good thing or a bad thing because now the smoke kind of eases out on the eaves of the building. Uh, if it's coming out of the top, uh, I don't know, more people might actually, uh, yeah. Yeah. Put a ridge vent on when you re-roof. Yep, Jim, Jim, that's exactly what the guys are going to do. Uh, <laughs> I've got prawns to trade. Uncle Calvin, don't threaten me to build a good time, man. You know, Sam's is just up the street. And by the time you get down here, I can have some stuff done. You know, like I said, don't threaten me. But your niece is not going to watch. She's say, yeah, I need to stay up there. You can't come from Pennsylvania down here. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> just wear a mask. You'll be all right. <laughs> Uh, that's a beautiful feeling, being ahead of schedule. Dude, D, you have no idea. I am chilling today. This is why. So you guys ask me all the time, like, why don't you show? Or even in that last video where I showed you guys, where I, I just, I, I was seriously under a time constraint. Me doing a video or, or having a video camera out, it takes me twice as long to get stuff done. So making sure the camera is set up, making sure the angle is right, making sure I'm not blocking anything, making sure you guys can see what I'm doing. It really is, it, it puts some serious strain on me. And I have to also not only worry about the camera angles, the camera equipment, making sure I'm not knocking anything over, making sure the batteries are charged, making sure I have enough room on the SD card. I got a name cook, so that adds a whole nother dynamic to the cooks. I, you know, it, it is not easy sometimes. Sometimes it's easy and another, other times it is difficult. Matios is Long Island. All right. Sweet Lou, you be easy, man. You uh, definitely take care. John, take care. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I missed it, dude. I was, that bourbon, it, it got me in, man. I, I was sipping on it, and, and next thing I knew, like I said, I woke up at 10.15. I was pissed. I was trying to go back on the live stream, and I couldn't go back, uh, Russell. I couldn't go back. You know, on pork skins, uh, either his channel or mine. Big Lou's video on pork skins. Uh, I will, I, was it, I saw um, the guy from, uh, why can't I think of his name? Not Guga. Um, oh, why can't I think of his name? Not Mamau, not Guga. The, the other guy from Suvi Everything, he did a video on uh, chicharrones, and I haven't actually watched it yet, but I saw uh, he posted a video on it, and I haven't gotten a chance to watch it. This channel's name is Salty Tales, but I can't remember. Uh, 614 OG says, Morning, brother, Columbus, Ohio, in the house, prepping wings and ribs right now. Well, I, I prepped my wings already. They're in the refrigerator back there. That? Sounds like a horribly muffled scooter. Gosh, and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Those scooters do not move fast at all. Jimmy Q says, oh, yeah, you had that time when the fire department showed up. Yes, Jimmy, I actually talked about that uh, in the video when I started up Vicky this morning. Um, the whole thing was I talked about how I'm, I use charcoal in Vicky because when I use wood or used wood in Vicky, she didn't burn correctly. And um, 
I had not only the fire department show up, but I had a helicopter hovering overhead. So yeah. Uh. <laughs> Uncle Calvin, you be easy, man. Take care, tell Candy I said, what's up? No. <laughs> it's a it's a scooter. Like a 50cc scooter. Um, lots of folks have them around here because in Maryland, you can have a 49cc scooter and not have to have it registered, like a, like a full vehicle registration. You basically just get it registered as like an on-road vehicle, um, uh, and you don't have to pay the same insurance or taxes or registration. So lots of people use them, especially during the summer. And they're not that expensive in comparison to like a car, and they're way more reliable. Um, but there are a few folks that live around me that use scooters as their only means of transportation. And there's a guy that lives up the street and his scooter is dumb loud and it is ridiculous. <laughs> oh man. Whew. Double D Mike says, good morning, everybody. Hopefully you guys, are you guys hearing the wind noise? Because can hear the leaves in the, in the garage blowing around hopefully it's not too bad for you guys all right the smoker temperature is coming down we're looking at 273 degrees on that uh on that top shelf and it kind of brings me into my next point uh let's see ah, gosh. it seems like he's out on the main road behind me but I know for sure he lives up the street there. Uh, if it's the same guy I'm thinking of. Uh, let's see. Uh, good morning. Let's see who was that. James. Good morning. He says he's smoking as well. What are you cooking this morning, sir? So those of you guys who are cooking, what are you cooking this morning? Or what are you going to be cooking today? If you haven't already said it. Oh man. All right. So Jeremy says, how many grills smokers do you have back there? Need to go to rehab. <laughs> I need to talk to my wife. Uh, I need, I, <laughs> he needs me to talk to his wife. All right. So let's see. You guys can kind of barely see. So we have Bessie here. We have, this is Priscilla and you guys who have been around for a long time know Priscilla. I have a kind of a love hate relationship with Priscilla. I started working on it and then I, I lost I lost power in the garage and I couldn't work on it. Then it was just like tucked in the back of the garage, back burner project that I, I will be getting back on soon. That, of course, is Vicky. And I don't know if you can see it there in between Vicky and Priscilla. There is a little tabletop grill uh, and there is a there's a board standing up there uh, behind that board. There's a Weber Smoky Mountain that's sitting on top of that shelf back there. So, uh, and then also on the other side of me over here where the pickup truck is, my first smoker, that little bullet smoker sits out here. I haven't gotten rid of it. I haven't thrown it away or anything like that. So it sits on the side up there. As far as grills, um, the number, the number two, let's see if I can, the number two drum is over there somewhere, um, like behind, in front of the truck. So right where that pink bag is, right behind that pink bag. The number two drum sits there. I don't have any other smokers. Oh, of course, you can barely see, and I'm trying to, you know, of course, it's reverse. Though that right there is Johnny Five, the five foot long grill table. Uh, and that's it for smokers out here. I moved Bernadette from the garage to the back of the house. So she's sitting on the back of the house or at the back of the house. Also have the like 30 inch rectangular grill sitting out there at the back of the house. And then on the side of the house, I have the number one drum. I have an 18 inch Weber Smoky Mountain, the 24 inch, or excuse me, excuse me 22 inch Weber uh, Kettle Charlotte. I have Tracy Traeger, and then I have Sammy the Big Green Egg. Um, and then I know I have another like small grill here or there in the house. Like I have a, a little tabletop Weber Smoky Joe. So that's only, those are only the grills that I have. <laughs> uh, and Jeremy, I tell you, it's way better to ask for forgiveness than permission. So, you know, that, that's it. Uh, 
I am cooking Double D Mike. I have a brisket in the smoker currently, and I have some wings that I need to cook as well. So I have a few small orders uh, over the week. I posted some, like, was it this week, last week? I posted, it was this week. I posted a video, or not a video, a picture on my Instagram of some beef ribs that I will be showing a video for you guys. It'll probably be end of next week. It might go up. The, but that video will go up next week. And when I posted the video, or posted the picture on Instagram, I had folks asking, uh, can I get some wings? Can I get some of this? Can I get some of that? So I had two people ask for wings. So I was like, all right, sure, I'll cook some wings on Saturday morning. And then I had um, somebody I've cooked for before. Uh, they wanted some brisket. They wanted a couple pounds of brisket. So I found a small brisket, and I'm doing the small brisket for them. I'm just going, the, the order was for four pounds of brisket, this little eight and a half pound brisket. By the time it's all cut up and done, it'll be a little more than four pounds. It might be closer to five pounds, actually. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh -huh. They they sent me a nice little tip, and I was able to buy the brisket, buy the wings, and I bought some spare ribs with the amount that they paid me for the um, for the brisket. So I said, you know, hey, I'll, I'll cut it up, get it all sliced up, and I'll take it to them, and they can have the whole thing. So that's what I'm cooking today. What are you cooking today? Uh, James says he's cooking that leg of lamb. Yeah, so James, actually, um, you sent me a message on Instagram, and hopefully you got my reply. Uh, if you're, of course, I, I, and I think I tried to, to uh, reply to you and tell you what I, my thoughts were. So if you are doing, if you're going to uh, slice that leg of lamb up, and you know, do like slices of it, then you wanna cook it to a lower temperature. Now, if you're trying to shred that leg of lamb to make like a pulled leg of lamb, like you will a pulled beef or like a pulled pork, then cooking it up to 190 some odd degrees will probably be fine for you. It's kind of just more or less what you're going for. If you're looking for a shredded lamb, then you definitely need to take it to a much higher temperature. But uh, I always cook mine uh, to be sliced and not shredded. But I actually saw Chef Orel he did some lamb not too long ago, and yo, it looked phenomenal. It looked phenomenal. He cooked it, like he kind of spread it out, cut it in chunks, cooked it pretty pretty hot and fast, and then he took it, uh, wrapped it up, and then he shredded it. Man, it looked good. If you guys don't know, Chef Orel is over in the UAE. He's cooking uh, abroad, and yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Say that again for the folks in the back. What am I saying again for the folks in the back, D? Wangs. Yes, I'm cooking wings. <laughs> I'd rather say sorry and buy the wife something than me convince her to agree to another cooker. Yes, indeed. <laughs> 84 Barbecue just did a really good video on wings. All right, I'll have to check that out. And some smoked slaw. Well, you know, pulled lamb and smoked slaw. That's, whoo, that'd be good. CJ, what the hell are you doing up so damn early? I know CJ's on the, my watch. The, my watch has stopped. Like it stopped last night. It looks like it stopped last night at, at 9, oh, 9.21. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's sitting on the 16th. And I think oh, I, I got to get a battery for my watch. Usually, and those of you guys, well, I don't say those of you guys have been around for a while. But I love my Boulevard watches. And this has been my daily, those of you guys, I know some of you guys are like really into watches and have like multiple watches and wear different, I, I don't. I wear one watch every day, all the time. And this has been the one. I had this watch for probably four or five years. And usually when it's time for me to get a new watch is when the battery dies. That's usually when I decide to get a new watch. What the hell is that one? listening to the cars going down ripping up and down the main road behind me but i um i think it's about time to get a new watch the crystal on this one has some chips on it let me see if i can show you guys the crystal on this one has some chips in it yeah you guys can't see it's not gonna focus on that but the crystal has some chips on it around the edge and it is rather beat up but i love this watch like i love this watch and if you guys like boulevard watches know about boulevard watches you know the P.O. box is listed down below. Uh, CJ says he just put a brisket on. What are you cooking that brisket on? Uh, my 
hands are cold. Brother Bear says 33 watching, 33 thumbs up. Pretty good. Yes, sir. I agree. First thing in the morning, I can't I can't uh, be mad at that, man. I'm just hanging out on a rather impromptu clip. My brisket is sitting at 158 degrees. I will be wrapping it up soon, and I'll be wrapping up this live stream in about five minutes. So we're going to go at uh, 10 o'clock so I can get up and get that wrapped up. Uh, okay, CJ says he's cooking it in a pit boss vertical smoker. Uh, if you haven't and don't, uh, man, add some water to that thing. Uh, I've found that the convection in the uh, the pellet grills um, tends to dry things out just a little bit. So that or spritz. Um, I'm not really a big spritzer, but um, I've seen it work a little bit of wonders or some wonders on cooking different things. Actually, speaking of spritzing. Uh, that rib <laughs> cj said he has two water pans uh james says uh looking good dash thanks for all your help no problem man cj says he has two water pans yes w-o-u-d-e-r water okay water uh nice yeah, so James, I, I saw the video, the little video clip on Instagram that you sent me about that uh, reverse flow. So see that there? That's what you want to see. Uh, what when In your video, what you showed me, it wasn't ready to be cooked on yet. That was white smoke. That was dirty smoke. This is actually steam. There's no smoke. You can't see the smoke. When the smoke is coming from the smoker properly, you cannot see the smoke. Uh, that is that blue smoke you want. What you were uh, showed me or what you sh sent me was a thick white smoke. You don't want that. Um, I actually have a clip that when this video airs, when this video plays, that I will put in of that thick white smoke that you don't want. And like to the point where me sitting here, you couldn't see the back of the garage. The entire, it was like a cloud from about here all the way up and out that you, you don't want to be in here. You don't want to be near it. Uh, that's not the, the smoke you want. That is not the smoking you seek. <laughs> uh, Derek says he's cooking some ribs today. That's what's up. What kind of ribs? Baby back, spare, St. Louis, beef, lamb. What kind of ribs you cooking? Gosh, I am dying to get back in the house. It is chilly. And I'm sitting here by the door where the wind comes in and buffets in. It's cold. It's cold. I am looking forward to wrapping the brisket up and going back in the house for a little while. Thanks, Steve. I'm going to need it. Uh, let's hope the brisket is edible. Man, Sean, I'm sure your brisket will be fine. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Holy cow, we have almost 50 likes. If you haven't hit that thumbs up button for me, please, could you do me a salad? Let's, let's up. There, we got the 50, but now we, we need to get 60. Can we get 60? If you haven't already hit that thumbs up button for me, can you hit the thumbs up? I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, 32 of you guys currently hanging out. Uh-oh, uh Sean, it's your first time cooking a brisket? Just be patient. Don't try to put it on a timetable. Let the brisket cook, okay? Just be patient. Uh, how big of a brisket is it going to be? <laughs> uh, Sean, how big of a brisket is it? And see, Big Steve, that's why I love Steve, Big Steve. He said the same thing. He said, it'll, you know, uh, it will. He said, don't stress. Exactly, man. Just barbecue is not about stressing out, man. It's, it's relaxation. Just, just relax. Just, you know, don't fiddle with your cooker either a whole bunch. Baby bags and brisket, Derek says. That's what's up. I made four slabs of St. Louis yesterday. Glad I was able to see this how this day started. Heck yeah, man. With the snow, I can't imagine. Shoot, I'm glad we, we we had a very mild winter. I don't even think we had enough snow to close school, but maybe one time. And then we get the COVID-19 and schools are closed right now up and through May, middle of May. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Jimmy Q says, keep calm and smoke on. <laughs> Uh, CJ agrees. This is damn right, man. It was 12 pounds after trimming. It's a little over nine. Well, that's what's up. I don't, as you guys see, I don't trim my briskets rather aggressively. I kind of just let it roll. Uh, I kind of try to buy the brisket for what I am cooking. So, um, because now here's another thing too. 
I've had people ask if I cook briskets for my family. I don't. Uh, I've I've cooked enough briskets for my family where if I cook a whole brisket, it's going to go to waste. Uh, I only cook briskets nowadays to sell. So I will probably cook a brisket in the near future um, for them. Uh, Frio t actually he told me that he cooks the point because majority of folks in my house love the point um, so he cooks the point he separates the point from the flat and just like that I've hit my temperature 160 degree degrees you can't see it because I need batteries in here but I hit my temperature 160 degrees I'm gonna go ahead in the house get a foil pan so I can get back out here and get this wrapped up and it's I'm two hours into this cook two hours and the brisket is already at 160 degrees so those of you guys who were like the brisket can't be done or it, it can't be at the temperature it is it it happens it happens and there's nothing wrong with it taking you know less time it's a small brisket it's not gonna take that long those of you guys are, are sometimes a lot of people cook like a 15 17 18 20 pound brisket and they want to talk about how it takes 18 hours Man, you cook a tiny brisket, it'll be done in six, if that. Obviously, you guys see this brisket has only been on. This brisket has been on for two hours, and it's already at 160 degrees. And it's not like I left it sitting on the counter and it was closer to room temperature. It was still cold when I put it in there. Anyway, I want to say thank you guys so very much for hanging out. I really do appreciate you. Let's say bye. If you're looking, you ain't cooking. I haven't opened up that door in two hours, so I don't even know what that brisket looks like. Just make sure you come back next live and let us know how your brisket turned out. Uh, Sean, yes, indeed. Uh, I totally agree. Frio says it's supposed to be 65 degrees tomorrow. Hold on, I'll, I'll do that emoji for you. Like, you know, what can you do? Um, I can't wait. James says it's 44 degrees here in Wisconsin. It is in the low 40s here as well. Uh-oh. I hear that plastic bag. I'm going to actually go pick it up. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Sean says, I'll let y'all know Wednesday if it was an epic fail. I have faith in you, sir. It will not. You will not fail. Uh, yes. The 10 a.m. You called it. Good job. Uh, you know what? So, I feel kind of hypocritical because I'm telling people not to cook the time. But once you get to the point where you cook enough, you can kind of guess how long something is going to take. But I don't want to tell you, oh, this this. 14 pound brisket is going to take six hours to cook or eight hours to cook no it could take five and a half hours it could take seven hours you know uh, -uh. but i knew going in here putting this brisket on that the way that the temperature was it was the temperature was high in the smoker and the way it was cooking just i saw the temperature curve that it would be done at about 10 o'clock for me to wrap it and i am so far ahead of schedule that i am going to chill i'm going to Go in the house, get that, get the pan, and I'll get my wings on and uh, get it, get them wrapped up, get the uh, brisket wrapped up and get it finished. And then I'll get my wings done rather quickly as well. I might move. So right now I have the brisket on the second shelf from, so one, two, three, four. I have it on the second shelf. When I put the wings on, I'll put them on the second shelf and then I'll move the brisket down because again, I'm not in a rush to get this brisket done, but I do want to make sure it finishes in a timely fashion. Other than that, guys, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to uh, try what kind of smoke. Um, that kind of smoke. Uh, so I have in here, there's two splits of oak, white oak, I believe. And yeah. All right, Kent, have a good one. See ya. Uh, snowing in mass, Mark says. <laughs> Kent, I'm not going to read that. You know, um, I'm not going to read that. Mm, you just... The crown on my head anyway thank you guys so very much if you haven't already hit that thumbs up hit it on the way out i'd greatly appreciate it i will see you guys on the next live stream check out the video on tuesday live stream on wednesday and another video on next thursday thank you guys again so very much and i'll see you next time I'm gone.